So, this is going to be a very different video than normal. I'm not going to be doing a discussion, I'm not going to be covering the spoilers, nor is this a review, but this is something totally different. And in this video, I want to talk about pitting two different quirks against each other to see which quirk is better. And that's what we're going to talk about right after this intro. Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Manga Man Drew, here to talk to you about my new series that I'm planning on doing on the channel that I am at the moment calling My Hero Academia Quirk Battle, where basically what I'm going to be doing is pitting two different quirks against each other over a few different criteria to see which quirk is better, and at the end, give a simple scenario of what would happen if these two quirk users ever came and fought each other. And in today's video, it is very pertinent because the two quirks that we're going to be talking about are the two potential quirks that we're going to see a little bit more in next chapter, manga chapter 319, and it involves two particular characters with two very similar quirks. And before we get more into the video proper, I'd like to ask you, if you haven't done so, to subscribe to my YouTube channel if this is a type of series that you are looking for when it comes to My Hero Academia and that's something that you're interested in, subscribe to my YouTube channel channel and hit that notification bell to be notified for whenever I upload these videos and without the way let's get right into it so in today's video I decided that we're going to pit up two characters that may have relevancy in the upcoming chapter of My Hero Academia manga chapter 319 and these characters is going to be the newly introduced character of dictator with his quirk despot and who he's going to be facing in this new quirk battle is going to be none other than Shinzo with his brainwashing. And you may be wondering, why Shinzo? Well, besides the fact that they have very similar quirks, remember, we saw Bakugo in chapter 318, and as he was talking to some people on the phone, that he was telling them that he found Deku, specifically referring to a group of individuals. And that group of individuals could be class 2A now because they are in their second year. And if you remember, Deku dropped out of UA, meaning that a spot was opened up for someone to come in and most likely that person is going to be Shinzo. So most likely we're going to see class 2A next chapter and we're probably going to get a reintroduction of Shinzo as a proper member of class 2A. And that is why I am making this video potentially to show that Shinzo is going to be coming up soon in the manga. I just really want to make a video about that as well as making this series about it. So without little tangent out the way, I'm going to get right into how this video is going to be structured. So, you may be wondering what quirk battle actually is. Well, it's very simple. It is when I pit two different quirks, either some quirks that share a similarity with one another, or they could be two different quirks, but there's a connection between their users, and I basically talk about their benefits, their weaknesses, their strength, and all that to determine whether or not one quirk is better than the other. And I do have a few criteria that I like to go over where I'll be awarding points to particular quirks if they are able to meet the specific standard of each criteria and the criteria are as such. The quirks will be judged on how effective they are in these categories. The first category is one-on-one -on -one fighting, how well this quirk stacks up in a one-on-one -on -one fight. The second criteria is a battle royale, where how this quirk will match up against multiple opponents against them. The third criteria is going to be search and rescue, and this can possibly award two points if the quirk is very effective in both search and rescue or either or. The fourth category is utility slash support, basically how this quirk can be used in a more supportive role for the user or other characters, or how it can be utilized in daily life. And the fifth category is uniqueness, how unique the quirk is when it comes to having specifically unique weaknesses, unique strengths, and how unique the quirk actually is and whether or not there are other quirks like it. And basically, those are the criteria that I'm going to be using to determine whether or not a quirk is better than another. And generally speaking, each criteria will be afforded one point if it is able to prove that it is capable of doing what I'd stated, 
or it will be awarded zero points if it does not meet the criteria itself, with the only exception being uniqueness, where each quirk will be either afforded one point, zero points, or negative points, depending on whether or not it has a unique strength, it has an ability that is used among many different quirks, or it has a specifically unique weakness that takes away from it. And that's basically how I'm going to be determining whether or not one quirk is better than the other. And with that, let's jump right into it by talking about the quirk of the most recent character, Dictator, with his quirk, Despot. So, Despot is a quirk that allows the user to puppeteer other people's bodies, and he's generally able to do that by using different tendrils coming out of his body to willingly control them, and he's able to control them even though they retain their consciousness. And when it comes to a one-on-one -on -one fight, which is the first criteria we're going to talk about, I believe that this is actually going to be a very impactful quirk and a very useful quirk in a one-on-one -on -one battle because he's able to, if he's able to catch the person, control them, and by then he's able to win the fight. So I will award him one point in that category due to the fact that it is a quirk that can instantly incapacitate a individual or an enemy and they will have no way of being able to fight back because the user of Despot, once they attach their tendril to them, will have full control over their body and movement. Going into the second criteria of Battle Royale, I will also be awarding Despot another point, mainly due to the fact that in the same vein that it's very effective in a one-on-one -on -one fight, it is just as, if not more impactful, in a Battle Royale because of the fact that the user of Despot can have the ability to control and manipulate and puppet multiple people at once in an instant as we see in chapter 318 so he is also going to be awarded another point for battle royale now going into the criteria of search and rescue this is going to be the first criteria where despot will be awarded zero points because even though despot has the ability to control people with that ability it is not as useful for search and rescue. It does not have any type of utility to help rescue people because if someone is hurt or trapped, he can control them and cause them to move. But if they're already in a situation where they can't move well, then forcing them to move would actually be very detrimental when it comes to rescue. And when it comes to its applications and being able to search, all Despot can do is cause people to move against their actions, but it does not actually help with searching for individuals. He can use them potentially to help search, but if they're a type of individual that didn't want to be controlled in the first place, or if there's someone who would have searched anyway, then it doesn't provide any type of benefit in searching, and as the same can be said about rescue. So unfortunately, Despot will be awarded zero points. Tying into that idea, even though it would not be great at search and rescue, it could still have some utility slash support because when it comes to the quirk of Despot, it can be very useful and be very supportive if you're able to control people, aka the enemy, because if you're able to do that, if you're fighting in that battle royale state, if you're able to can take control of the enemy, you can theoretically use them as shields or even use them as sort of bargaining chips to help get the job done. And they can actually act as support if, let's just say, uh, someone has been incapacitated by a villain, that if they're able to control them, they're able to get them out of the way faster and get them to safety. It could still sort of kind of be used as a support work or even as a way to make sure that villains are unable to escape or the enemy is unable to escape once they have been captured. So it basically guarantees that they won't be able to escape so he can be very great or the person that uses Despot can be very great at restraining people once captured. So with that, I will actually award it one point in that category. So before I get into the last category, I like to go over brainwashing now for its first four categories because the fifth category of uniqueness is something that is best to be talked about when I've talked about both brainwashing and despot prior. So now we'll talk about brainwashing. 
Brainwashing is a quirk that allows the user to put their target in a state where they are forced to obey all commands. And this is very similar to how Despot works. The only major difference, and we'll get to that primarily, is how these quirks are activated. And because they're so similar when it comes to a one-on-one -on -one fight, brainwashing is very useful because it's a one-hit capture one hit defeat if he's able to use it on an individual or use it on the enemy because it is activated by answering the user so if the user is able to get someone to answer their question they can immediately be incapacitated and the user would have full command over their actions so in a one-on-one -on -one fight it is very useful now when it comes to a battle royale situation when it comes to brainwashing in actuality, it's not as effective in a battle royale setting in comparison to Despot, mainly due to the fact, and we'll get to this a little bit more in the uniqueness category, brainwashing can only be used on one person at a time. So in a battle royale, the person who uses brainwashing can only use it on one individual before they can use it on another. Now that does not mean that they are incapable of controlling multiple people at once, it just means that it will take a lot more time to do so. So even though Despot is probably more effective in controlling people in a battle royale setting, brainwashing is still capable of doing the exact same thing just within a larger amount of time. So even if that's the fact, I will still be awarding brainwashing one point because it can still be used effectively in a battle royale setting because it just takes a little bit more time, but it can still be done. And now when it comes to search and rescue, unfortunately, it also fails to get zero points in this category in the same vein as Despot, but it can do so for different reasons, mainly due to the fact that even though the user of brainwashing can control people and force people to do certain actions, they are still incapable of providing complex information to the user, meaning that if the user wanted them to rely on prior information to provide them with information, they are unable to do that. Meaning that if he brainwashes a person in a gang, he's unable to get them any information or give them specific commands that requires external thought that the user would not have access to. So that is very important. And when it comes to rescue, Yes, he has the ability to control someone if he speaks to them and they respond, but if that's the case, if someone is in danger and responds to Shinzo and as he's targeting them, then they would stop screaming because they would be in an unconscious state and it will not be effective in trying to find where they are if they aren't making any noises to indicate their location. So unfortunately, brainwashing is not an effective tool for either search or rescue. And when it comes to utility and support, brainwashing automatically gets a point in this category, mainly due to the fact that if you do not know what the quirk is, it is a one hit KO move that if you respond to him, whether you know he's speaking to you or not, you will automatically be captured, meaning that it will be easy for him to help other fellow heroes in a tough situation by just speaking to someone and then responding to them and they are instantly captured. So when it comes to support, brainwashing is very impactful because it has the capability of putting anyone under his control in an instant by a single response. So it obviously gets one point in that category. And now we get to the final criteria of uniqueness. In this criteria, we'll be discussing whether or not the powers, weaknesses, strengths of the quirks are specifically unique to the quirk itself and not shared with its opponent or with other quirks. And there could be some that I could have missed, but I've already have a list of the general idea of the quirks that are specifically unique either to brainwashing or to despot. And we'll start with despot first. So for starters, despot gets one point automatically because when it comes to its activation and use, despot can be used by using tendrils on his back. And that is something that is specifically unique to despot when it comes to controlling people. And it also gets another point because of the fact that unlike brainwashing, Despot can control multiple people at once because it can produce multiple tendrils that can attach to multiple people 
at a time in comparison to brainwashing that can only do it one at a time. So right now, Despot gets an additional two points. So now we're getting into the specific unique downsides of Despot where it will be awarded negative one point mainly due to the fact that when he controls the people they are still conscious and able to speak and the reason why i say that this is a weakness because if the individual understands or knows how despot works they are able to warn whoever they are attacking about how to stop it which puts despot user at a grave disadvantage because if they weren't able to speak then the people would not know how to stop him unless they already had prior knowledge beforehand. So with that, I will actually award it negative one point. And another negative that I will add to Despot is the fact that it requires the user to specifically tether itself to a person to actually control it, which can be very detrimental as we're going to see later on that when it comes to that, it means that it's very easy to know what to do. If you're able to take out the user, then the person will no longer be under their control, which isn't something that you can necessarily say about brain. And the reasoning why I bring this up is because when it comes to how a person can break out of despot, you either have to hurt the user or you have to hurt the person to break the binding, which isn't necessarily the case for brainwashing when it comes to the user, because from what we're understanding so far, the user can still be under the brainwashing even if the user of brainwashing is no longer conscious. So that means that it's going to be a negative for Despot because his tethering is specifically the reasoning why he's able to control people, which would be very detrimental if he breaks that tether. And now with that, let's go over to brainwashing and describe some of its uniquenesses as well. And one of the most unique things about brainwashing is its activation criteria, which requires Shinzo to speak to begin to control people. And that is something that we haven't seen in any other quirks. So I award Shinzo's brainwashing with one point. But unfortunately, I have to take that point away because it also has a unique weakness where if he asks them a question for the target that he's trying to control, they must respond to him. So that means that if they are quiet, if they are mute or they are unable to talk, then he is unable to control that people and even certain gestures can be used to mitigate that criteria of having them to respond. So unfortunately, I will also have to award brainwashing minus one point. But I will award brainwashing one additional point because when it comes to brainwashing, when it is used on an individual, they are unable to speak, unable to move, and only responds to the controls of the user. Basically showing that brainwashing, for the most part, gives the user full control over that person. And even though they are somewhat conscious, because they're unable to speak, they're unable to spill how brainwashing works. And because they're unable to move on their own, except by the will and control of the brainwashing user, they will be able to stand still, which allows for someone else to come in and capture them. And because that is something that is unique to brainwashing, I will award it one point. But unfortunately, I have to give brainwashing another negative two points. One, because through brainwashing, you have to physically speak to the person and you can't use a recording or you can't use any form of electronics like a speaker or a microphone to amplify it, meaning that he can only control people that are within the distance of hearing his voice. So that's very detrimental. But another point is taken away because unfortunately with brainwashing, you are unable to put multiple people under your control at once. You have to control one person at a time, meaning that if you're fighting against three people with brainwashing, you would have to target each specific person individually, ask each single person a question or force them to respond to you. And you have to basically do that three times, which is very detrimental, unlike with Despot, where it, the user can immediately control those three people at once if he's able to make contact with them. So with that, I unfortunately had to dock another from brainwashing. Now, with that out the way, we've gone through every different criteria for both brainwashing and despot. 
And with that, I will give sort of a situation on who will win the fight between Shinzo and Dictator and then give you the points for what quirk is officially the better quirk. So here's the situation. Shinzo is swinging through the air with his Biden cloth, trying to capture the villain Dictator. Dictator knows that he's being followed and knows that he's capable of defeating the enemy in an instant if he's able to detach his tendrils on him. Dictator sees Shinzo. Shinzo sees Dictator. Dictator begins to throw his tendrils at Shinzo. Shinzo begins to dodge it with his biting cloth and he begins to speak to Dictator. Dictator laughs and it responds, but then immediately freezes and is unable to move. In that instant, Shinzo was able to use his brainwashing to capture Dictator and wins the fight instantly. The winner is Shinzo. Now, you may be thinking that because I gave Shinzo the win in the fight between him and Dictator, that Shinzo's quirk is obviously the better quirk. Unfortunately, that is not what the points portray. Because in actuality, when it comes to the points, Dispot is actually the better quirk than brainwashing point-wise. Because Dispot had three total points, but brainwashing only had two and with that out the way uh technically dispot is the better quirk based off my arbitrary ranking system but when it comes to probably in a more fight situation when it comes to immediately taking down one enemy brainwashing is probably the most effective but if you're trying to take out multiple people at once then i would say despot is probably the better quirk so yeah uh, that's kind of what I have when it comes to comparing these different quirks. What did you think of this? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Do you agree with me that I'm saying that Dispot is the favorite quirk or that Shinzo would win in a fight between himself and Dictator? What do you think? Leave your thoughts down below. Uh, what other quirks would you like me to pit up against each other? Because there are very, very many quirks that I could do with this series. So give your suggestions down in the comments down below. Leave a like on this video if you liked it. And if you did, maybe you want to hit that little notification bell to be notified for whenever I upload as well as subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, with that out of the way, hopefully you enjoyed this video, hopefully you enjoyed this matchup, and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>